Hi everyone, welcome back to the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel. I'm joined by Kevin Olasanye, the Executive Director of the Rhode Island Democratic Party. Kevin, thanks for joining thanks us for today. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. I appreciate having you in today. Yeah. In the wake of the special election in Alabama, we saw Roy Moore defeated by Doug Jones. As the Executive Director of the Democratic Party here and looking around the country, how monumental was this to the party? This is a huge win. Uh, there's no couching it. Um, Alabama, as you know, is a very conservative Republican state, and uh, to have that many people show up in a special election in December and an off election year is, is great. And so, um, you know, whether, um, I know I certainly was watching the coverage at nighttime and, and was telling people they should expect a 2% race. I didn't think that uh, <laughs> we were going to be able to pull this one out, but mm. it's a credit to all the good folks who did a lot of good work down in Alabama to get it going. Now, again, by that close margin of victory, you know, we've seen folks kind of weighing in today after the fact, and, you know, some folks on the Republican side even saying, well, that's not that big of a victory, but a win is a win. How was Doug Jones able to be successful? Well, I think it really comes down to three important things. One is you got to run good candidates. And um, I think it's fair to say that Roy Moore was a flawed candidate. Um, but I also think that that had a lot to do with what Doug Jones did as a candidate and how he prosecuted the campaign. You'll recall that he fought off a lot of people from outside of the state. This was not Georgia 6 where you know everybody came down at the last minute to try to do this. Mm. He kept this campaign about Alabama issues and Alabama values and kind of talked to the people of Alabama, built a strong grassroots campaign. So you got to have a good candidate. Mm -hmm. and the other thing you got to do is you got to be building a strong organization and really organizing. We talk a lot about the difference between being an organized party and a mobilized party. Mm. And I think um, the Democratic Party had gotten to a place where we were really good at mobilizing voters to get them out to vote, but not organized. And I think you saw a huge difference in that. Mm. And the total number of doors knocked, the total number of contacts, and the amount of um, grassroots activity that happened in Alabama in such a short period of time. So that's two. And I think number three is you got to lead with your values. And that ultimately, I think, is what this was all about, right? Um, if you have a good candidate and you build a good organization, you still have to have the good message and be on the right side of the issues, and whether it was taxes or health care or education or all the things that working families in Alabama, just like Rhode Island and all across the country care about, Doug Jones is on the right side of the issues. And so, you know, you got to have all three of those things. Doug Jones is able to do all of that. And so we saw the statement from the party today, again, about the, the people who really elected him, young people, African Americans. Mm -hmm. I mean, what does this have to say, especially Alabama, that hadn't elected a Democrat for the Senate in 25 years? Yeah. I mean, do you think this is indicative of the country as we go into midterms, not just locally here, but throughout the country? I mean, where do you think the party stands going into 18? Well, I think the momentum is certainly on our side. And I don't think that you can look at Alabama in a vacuum. You have to look at Alabama in the context of New Jersey and in the context of Virginia and the midterm elections that happened in November. Mm. And what you've seen all across the country is people are really energized and really enthused. They are fed up with the, some of the stuff that they see coming out of Washington, D.C. They're fed up with stuff that they see coming out of their individual st states. And I think the difference is no longer do people look at it as, I'm just going to exercise my right to vote and that's it. Now they're actually looking to get involved. And so we see it here in the state. People knock down our doors. They want to make phone calls. They want to knock on doors. They want to get involved. They want to run for office. They want to raise money. They want to do all the stuff that it takes to help to win. And so. Um, that kind of enthusiasm is, is a breath of fresh air, and it's, it's the reason why I'm really optimistic about things and the way that they're going to play out here in Rhode Island. And we're coming into, we are an election cycle for 18 sure. here. I can't say yeah. we're coming into it. We are here. Um, you know, what do we expect on the Democratic side? And I want to ask specifically the role of the progressive Democrats in the state. You yeah. know, they have their own organizational structure, sort of under the big hat D's. How is We've had uh, the chairman in and I've spoken with him about that as well, but how did that sort of, both sides of the party work together under that big umbrella? Yeah, Sam and I have a good relationship, and what I can say is that, um, I, you know, I, I am one of those Democrats who believe that whether you're super, super progressive or you're a moderate or you're a conservative, what really matters at the end of the day is accomplishments and what you do for the people that you represent. So. Um, 
I think there are certainly opportunities for us to all work together. Look, the Democratic Party is a big tent. And what that means is you're going to have people with a large cross-section of uh, differences of opinion. And we need that, right? We need that diversity of opinion. That's what makes our country great. Um, and we got to figure out a way to work with each other on the things that we can work together on. And then I expect that there will be places where we'll have disagreements, like any big family, right? <laughs> and, um, and that's what it's going to be. But um, I'm excited. I'm excited. I think, um, you know, the truth is we're going to need... Uh, energy and there's a lot of energy on the progressive side for sure so figuring out how to work with our progressive friends is going to be a very important part of how we're successful next year. And what do you think of going into 18 as the executive director of the party? We talk with folks when they come in about the biggest challenges facing Rhode Island. What would you say is really the pressures that are on the state here that need to be most addressed? God, I, you know, we're obviously going in the right direction. You know, four years ago, um, our state was ranked 50 out of 50 in terms of business climate. Um, and very recently, um, we were ranked 26. Now, um, we've come a long way in four years, and there's definitely a long way to go. But I think, you know, that's where we're going to hear a lot of um, um, folks out there who are still kind of hurting, right? And that's a national thing. That's not just here in Rhode Island, mm -hmm. right? People are. Um, watching the stock market at a record high, but it's not translating into their pockets, and they want to know what are their leaders going to do to make sure that they're better off, that their kids are going to be better off. And so that's, I think, a lot of what we're going to be talking about. Um, I also think, frankly, leadership is a really important quality that people are missing. Um, you know, we watch every night as the president sort of disappoints us left and right with some of the things that he says and tweets, and I think one of the things that you hear in the coffee shops and in the supermarkets everywhere is people just really want leadership and they want to know that their leaders are ready to tackle tough challenges. They may not always have the right answers, um, but they want to know that their leaders are out there working on the things that, that need to be worked on. And so I think that's going to be a major thing that we'll be talking about next year. Leadership in the economy as we're heading into 18. We're here in the middle of December. We've heard from the General Assembly they'll be looking at the POSOX legislation going back in. But again, this Alabama race was just such a pivotal moment that the country was focused on with everything that surrounded the race within mm -hmm. itself. And again, polls even leading up to Tuesday had more winning, but you said, you know, it's going to be close. And I think folks knew it was going to be close. And the Democratic Party did put out a release today about a statement about the race, but I wanted the executive director here in the studio to talk with folks about it. Any parting thoughts, Kevin, both about Alabama and sort of looking into 18 for the Democratic Party? Yeah, look, I think the most important thing that people can take from what happened in Alabama is, again, you got to have good candidates, you got to try to compete everywhere, and you got to have a message that resonates. Um, two things that I saw in exit polls that were really important that I think have some implications for what happens here in Rhode Island. One is you will see that millennials, who I believe are going to be the largest voting bloc in our country very soon, mm -hmm. overwhelmingly voting for Democrats in the Alabama election. And part of that had to do with where Democrats stand on the issues that they care about, whether it's you know the cost of higher education or student loans and being able to refinance those loans. I've heard from uh, law school classmates who are now public interest loan forgiveness program. Republicans are looking to try to get rid of that down in Washington. And so. Um, those are the issues, that's a rising constituency that everyone's trying to figure out how to talk to, and if Republicans don't figure out what to do with their messaging, they're going to lose that group altogether. Um, I think one other thing I think is really important for here in Rhode Island is, like I said, that economic message. You look at the folks who voted for Donald Trump in Rhode Island, and you look at um, sort of their chief complaint, and it was this idea that there's a disconnect between the economy is getting better, but it's not getting better for me, and how do I deal with that? A lot of them were frustrated, and that frustration led to them to do what I think is a protest vote, and there are some of those folks who have buyer's remorse, who are not happy about that decision, and who have not gotten out of the administration what they thought they were going to get out of, and I think figuring out a way to being able to talk to those folks and bringing them back to the Democratic vote is going to be a very much important part of what we do next year. Well, we're going to continue to keep a close eye. I'm sure we'll have you back in studio. Absolutely. But I appreciate your coming in for the first time here and to go local, and we'll have you back again. Happy holidays. Thank, Thank you for you coming too. in, Kevin. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. See you. Okay.
Kevin Alessani, the executive director of the Rhode Island Democratic Party, wanted to bring him in today following the results of the special election in Alabama. We started off the show getting a very local journalist take, former Go Local editor Tracy Minkin, who's been living in Birmingham, gave us that boots on the ground perspective of what it was like to be down there for the process. We also then got really local here with Noel Frias with the Trinity Square Development Alliance in the Upper South Side, what it is they're looking to do to improve the business district there. Judge Frank Caprio got him here in studio, a very popular face. Wasn't quite sure how popular. Over a billion views in social media of his popular show, Caught in Providence, going to be picked up nationally by Fox in 2018. Wanted to hear right from the judge what doing the show has been like. It's great to have him in. And then Kevin Lasagne, the executive director of the Rhode Island Democratic Party. Again, both talking about Alabama, but now all eyes are on 18, both here in Rhode Island and nationally. I'm sure he'll be back here in studio. We'll be back here in studio tomorrow for Thursday for Lifestyle with Molly O'Brien at 3 o'clock. I'll be back at 4 with news and politics. We appreciate your watching. We appreciate your feedback. Keep reading GoLocalProv.com online, but we'll see you back here at the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center tomorrow. I'm Go Local News Editor Kate Nagel.